Hey guys, it's Chili here. Welcome back to CPU Design. Uh, in the last episode, I implemented the circuitry for the branching instructions, and this time we're going to be making a program. But first things first. So I kind of alluded to this in the previous episode, but uh, these instructions here, the, the circuitry that detects what, what kind of branch we want to do, whether it's a jump for equals, jump above, or jump below, uh, this circuitry here is looking, it's examining both the zero bit and the carry bit, the zero flag and the carry flag. But as I've shown, uh, not all of these instructions require the use of, uh, or the examination of both of those flags. Well, I didn't show that, but I kind of, uh, uh, I implied it because when we look at this, the instructions for the x86, we notice that our one of them only examines the, uh, the carry flag. And this is actually important. At first I was like, meh, I don't care. I mean, I don't want to, I'm not going to micro-optimize this. But in actuality, it is important that we have one instruction that only examines the carry flag. Because then we can do a jump if carry, which is a kind, it's a different kind of jump. Uh, so, let's, quickly, let's uh, examine the operations again. So we've got three cases. If the numbers are equal, like this and we subtract, what we're going to do is we're going to flip the bits and then we're going to add one. So if we flip the bits and add one, what do we get? Well, flipping the bits, we get one, 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 zero, but then we add one, we get a one. And if we add that, what we get is a number like this. So that means that the carry flag is set and because the, re the results here are zero, the zero flag is also set. So if equals, jump equals means, uh, is that the right, I don't think that's the right thing I want to do. Uh, what is the one I want to do for and? I guess like just this. So jump of equals fires only if carry and zero, or at least these are flags that get set uh, when two numbers are equal. Let's say that. Uh, so what if, let's try, uh, above. So above is going to be like this, right? Uh, one, 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 like this. And we subtract that. It means we flip the bits and add one. And again, we're left with this, right? And if we add this up, we're going to get a one, zero, 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 one, right? So that means that we have carry, uh, and not zero. So above is going to give us carry and not zero. So what about below? Well, let's look at it like this. Below is going to be like one, 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 zero. That's the opposite. I'm, the words I'm saying are not aligning with the things I'm doing on the screen. Don't worry about it. So flip the bits and add one and we get, what do we get? Well, if we flip the bits, we get one, one, zero, one. We add one, we get one and zero, like this. We add those guys together, and we result. The result is going to be no carry and no zero. So what we notice here, here's the takeaway: we want to set up one of these instructions such that it only depends on the value of the carry flag. Now here's the deal, if we look at jump if above, if we only examine the carry, for example, if we say uh, jump if above will fire if carry is high, uh, the problem with that is that jump if equals, equals also sets the carry to high. So we can't do jump above just examining carry because that overlaps with uh, jump of equals. So we have to examine both carry and zero, and then we can differentiate between the above case and the equals case. So that means that jump of equals and jump of above have to examine both of these flags. Actually, that's not true because uh, jump of equals fires if the Z flag is set, and the Z flag is only set for the equal case. So let me rephrase that. Jump of equals only needs to examine the zero flag. Now, jump if above has to examine both of these flags, and jump if below only needs to examine the carry flag, and the reason for that is because if we look at these three guys, carry flag set, set, not set. So for this one, uh, 
it is sufficient only to examine the carry flag for jump of a blow. And by doing this, now we have an instruction that is only looking at carry, and we can also use this. So now jump if below is the same as jump if not carry. These are identical. And so we can use this instruction uh, to test for carry. Or, for example, jump if not below is equal to jump if carry and we're going to need this when we do our uh, program because the program i'm going to write is going to be a multiplication program by repeat adding and we're going to need to carry over during those operations you'll see you'll see chili's got it all planned out so what we need to do is we need to now refactor our code or not our code our circuit so that uh jump if below only examines uh the carry flag and we can also make jump of equal only examine the zero flag. Right, so jump of above is zero. Is that zero? Yeah. Jump of above is zero, is set. And carry is... No, wait, this, this, this isn't the, uh, the zero and the carry, this, this isn't the flags, sorry. This is the, uh, the encoding bits from the instruction. The flags are down here, excuse my French. Uh, so this is jump of equals, and it is doing, it's only examining the zero flag, which is what I want. Uh, jump if above is examining both of them, which is what I want. And jump if below, let's go back to our thing here, should only be examining the carry flag. So the carry flag is this one here, so that means I could just sever this connection here. No, please allow me to sever only this connection. Uh, please, please stop it. Please, I implore you. Fuck, that's not gonna work. Let me just make it a little small. Okay, we got it. We did it, people. We did it, fam. Now, what I wanna do is I want a number of inputs down to two. Beautiful. Full, not so beautiful. Um, this has got to be high. So, uh, right, wait, left, right. Now I'm confused. Uh, no. Yes. Okay, good. So this one is high. This one is not high. So it's going to jump if not carry, which is the same as jump if blow. And this should do the same shit. Uh, it's just going to do it, you know examining one fewer uh, thing here and that's going to make this instruction more useful to us because we can use it not only to test for belowness but also to test the carry flag directly uh let me just do a quick test to make sure everything is on the up and up all right i have no idea how this happened but apparently my and gate here has now got 20 inputs so Great, that might cause a problem. One second. Alright, a quick half-assed test has uh, seemed to show that the circuit is working. So, now it's time to get to the coding, but before we do that, just a little bit of housekeeping here. Um, so I've added some entries into here, I've probably changed some shit since the end of the last video. Added this color code key in here. And what I want to do, what I want to do is add, I guess, in here somewhere. I want to add a list of, I want to say like um, aliases. So let's just expand this guy here. Let's de-expand this guy. And uh, we're gonna call this one aliases. Let's bold this fucker. All right. So, this is stupid, because these aren't uh, individual instructions. Fuck. Uh, this isn't going to work. Alright, so what I want to do is I want to create a little table here, uh, just temporarily. I might move it to its own thing later on, but just to keep track of the aliases for instructions. Because these jumping instructions, they can have different meanings in different contexts. Exact same instruction. So, for example, jump if equals is the same as jump if zero, because if an operation results in zero, it's going to set the same flags as a comparison that is an equals. Uh, jump if not equals is going to be, again, jump if not zero. Uh, jump if above 
can be the same as uh, I don't know. Let me let me come back to this one. But jump if not above is the same as jump if below or equals. And jump if not below can be the same as jump if above or equals. Uh, now jump if below can be the same as, uh, let me just get back to this, I want to, I keep forgetting which one. Yeah, jump if below equals jump if not carry. So this is J in C, and it can also mean, no, that means that jump if not below can also mean jump if carry. So this, this little table of aliases is nice. I mean, I could go into here, I go and jump in above and put like, uh, jump if not below or equals, but that's not how I want to live my life, okay? There's, there's a limit to the craziness of the aliases here. So, these aliases will serve us well and we will use them when appropriate. Um, let's get on to the coding of the actual program. So we're going to set this up in... Uh, just in table format here. So, what we want here is gonna be... Alright, so we're gonna set up some columns like this. We're gonna put our assembly code in here. We're gonna put our labels in here. We can put some comments if we like in here. And then when we hand assemble this, we're gonna put the, the addresses down here and the machine code bytes down here, or whatever bytes go into memory. All right, so what we're going to do, uh, like I said, we're going to multiply two numbers, two 8-bit numbers, and the plan is to get a 16-bit result. So the way we're going to do this is the simplest way of multiplying, uh, and that is if we've got two 8-bit numbers, let's say we got the numbers, um, I don't know, 5 times 3. Uh, so what we can do is we can add 5 to some uh, accumulator value, it starts off at 0, and we do that 3 times. So you add it the first time, you get 5. You add it the second time, you get 10. You add it the third time, and you get 15, right? So the basic step is you add then you decrement the second number. You add, you decrement the second number until the second number reaches zero, and then you stop and you have your result. Now, the thing about this is, of course, we're going to get a 16-bit, if we got two 8-bit numbers, the result can be as much as 16 bits. So you got two bytes, right? So when you add a number to here, and it overflows, you have to take that carry and add it into here, basically incrementing this number. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do that in code. So, let me think here. First off, I want, uh, I want to put in some space in memory for my, my input and my outputs. So, the inputs are going to be, let's first, let's go org F0. So, we're going to start our, uh, I don't know if I should put in here like OH, F0H or something. Uh, yeah, let's put in here org F OF0H. So this is just telling the assembler, which is going to be me, Chili, uh, that the stuff that comes after here should start at the address F0. And uh, so what are we going to do here? Well, we're going to put in a defined byte directive here. We're going to lay out some space in memory where we're going to put our variables or parameters. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to put in, uh, we'll just call this um, in a defined byte question mark. So this one is going to just save some space in memory for variable named in a. We'll do one in b, defined byte question mark. Uh, I don't like those numbers actually. We're gonna in A and B. Yeah, it's fine. I don't care. Uh, then we are gonna do uh, out out low question mark. So this is gonna be the low uh, byte of the the result, and out high defined byte question mark. 
All right, so two values A and B, multiply them together and you get a 16-bit result. This is the low part, this is the high part. All right, uh, now we might have to move this down later on as we assemble more into here. So how is this, how is this um, routine gonna work out here? This is where it gets tricky. Uh, so what I'm thinking is we want, hmm. So I mean, we got a main loop and that main loop is going to add A to low. And then if there is a carry, it is gonna add one to high. Uh, so why don't we just try coding that up? Now the question is, how can we use can we use our registers uh, effectively to reduce loading and unloading? I'm not sure, but let's start with a move into a uh, from, and I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce a. Uh, a chili assembly language uh, thing in here. So ampersand means address of, or the offset of uh, in A. So we're gonna move the address of in A into A. And then we're gonna move uh, the value pointed to by that into A. So this moves the address into A and this moves the value at that address into A. This is loading this uh, variable into A. And then what we want to do is I can I feel like how we can't we can't do it all in registers though, can we? Cuz we need to we need to trash registers whenever we store something. So well, what should we do? Uh, let me think here. So we move a value into here, we do that, then we add that value to out high. Okay, well first of all, let's, uh, let me think here. I mean, we subtract one, from we subtract one from B that's the decrementing of B and when the result of that is that uh, B was zero then we can do a jump if below and that will I'm getting I'm getting ideas here I'm getting ideas so let me just cut this out Paste this here. No, oh, fuck. All right, failed that. Cut that out. Paste that here. Can I not cut out multiple things? Because that that would definitely piss me off. Okay, we can do it. All right. So, so what we're gonna do is first of all, we are going to initialize our memory because we've got to initialize these guys to zero. We've got to clear out that memory because we don't know what it could have been. Uh, it's probably going to start off at zero, but, well, let's, let's just assume for the start that it's going to start off at zero, and we can fix that up later. So what is the main loop doing? First of all, it's going to decrement B and check if B was zero before the decrementation. So how do we do that? Well, now what we can do is we can, uh, move, yeah, move into A from the address in B and then move into A from uh, yeah so move the address of in B into A and then indirect move into A from that address in memory and so this is the counter then we subtract uh, one from A and then we can do a jump if below end uh, because the only time A is going to be below 1 is if A is 0, right? So if A was 0 at the time of subtracting. So this will decrement the counter 
and it also allow us to jump if we are finished, if A was zero. So this is the important part of our loop. So this jumps to the end, and then we've got our result. Um, now, what we want to do next is, if we didn't jump to the end, and that means that we must perform a, an adding. So we can move into A from in A. And then we can move into A, you know, we do the, we do the hokey pokey, we turn our selves around, that's what it's all about. I'm running out of space here, I'm just gonna cop, cut this out, put it down here for now. I don't even know why I'm doing this, I could just type this out easily, but also I could have just used this directly, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, this makes no sense now because I could just literally copy this stuff if I wanted to. All right, so we move now, we load A, or we load in A into A register A. I, didn't, I shouldn't have named these A and B, because they kind of conflict with the names of our registers, but it's too late now. I mean, I could name them, okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to name them X and Y, which are also names of things in our CPU, but they're not things that we address in our code. So, uh, we move in Y, and then that, and we move in X. Alright. So, X is in there. X, X in there. Now we gotta add. Wait. We can't add. Yeah, we can't do that, can we? We've gotta now move into B. Uh, address of out low and then move into B the thing pointed to by fuck by that address here we go alright now we can add uh, I don't know which one I want to add to which but let's just add to A so now we add B and A now, let's do it the other way around. Let's add A to B. And now we want to store that back into here, right? So then we go move into A, address of out underscore low, and then move into the thing pointed to at by A from B. So this basically adds in X to out low. That's what we're doing here. There's a kind of optimization we could perform here, but I'm not going to do it. It involves self-modifying code. I'm not going to do self-modifying code right now. Let's just move this shit down for a while. There we go. Okay, so now we have added X to the output once, but we have to now check to see if this addition caused a carry, and if it caused a carry, we've got to add one to the output high. So now we do uh, jump, if not carry. Uh, I'm just going to call this one loop because I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what to call it. So loop is fine. So we're going to jump if not carry to loop. Where's loop? Well, loop is right here, right? Loop. Stop that. There we go. So loop is going to tell us... Um, yeah, you load the counter. You decrement the counter. You check to see if it's uh, if it was zero, and then you, end, you leave. Otherwise, you perform an addition. Now, so here we're going back, we do the loop again, but if, so that was if there's no carry, if there is a carry, then we've got to go, uh, let me think here, move into A, address of out high, move into A, you know that, and uh, then add A1, and then move into B, address of out high, and then move into 
memory pointed to by B from A. And this is what increments the out high memory. And then you want to jump unconditionally to loop. And then down here, you've got end. And you just want to jump to end. So once you reach the end by jumping from here to here, you just continually jump back. And this is the motherfucking program, people. Uh, let me just cut this out. Put this here. There we go. So, uh, we'll put here org zero hexadecimal. So we start off at the memory address zero and this is all the instructions that are going to go into memory and if I haven't fucked anything up this should allow us to multiply two 8-bit numbers together. It's a lot of code for a single multiplication but that's what you get when your CPU only has like you know this many instructions. I mean it has more because there's a bunch of instructions in here but they're all kind of the same thing. You get the idea. We're not running a very sophisticated CPU at this point. So this is not this doesn't produce an address it's just a it's just a directive. So address 00, zero is going to be move uh, in y into a. And what this is going to be is it's going to be move immediate value into a. Uh, so the, the opcode is going to be, and here's where things get a little tricky because we've got a lot of opcodes to look at now. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this tab. I'm going to then put it over here. And that is going to be my reference while I'm doing my bullshit here. So, uh, move immediate into A is going to be uh, just zero, 0, And then the address that's going in here is going to be a question mark because we don't know what the address of in Y is in yet. We'll, we'll learn that as we assemble the whole thing. So we'll just put a question mark in here and we'll, we'll come back to it later. So there was two bytes in here, so this one's now going to be, uh, this was zero, zero. This is, ah, fuck. Um, I forget how to force this shit to display two numbers, but I guess it doesn't matter too much. I'll figure it out later. So this is address two. And in here, uh, what are we going to put in here? Well, we are going to jam in this motherfucker. Let me think here. Should be thinking? Yeah, we want move A into A. Okay, so we want to move register from here to here, destination source, and that's going to be... Z one zero zero so that is zero four right correct I believe that is correct okay next one subtract from a we're gonna subtract one from a so this memory address is gonna be byte number three and we want to subtract one from a uh, where's a subtract here and immediate if source equals destination so this is gonna be one zero no, don't fucking do that. Oh shit. Control Z. Oh good. Oh, I, I was kind of scared there for a second. Alright, so this is gonna be... Fuck me. I really don't like not having uh, like zero, 00 or zero 04 for my hexadecimal numbers. That triggers me hard, so one second. Alright, so if I go in here into formatting and uh, I go plain text... Now it's all text. So now I can do shit like this, like this. Stop it. Now uh, you'll, you'll, you'll see in a second. All right, this is way better for my OCD. So we want one zero and then zero one, and that will subtract the immediate value one from A. And now that was two bytes, so this will be zero five. And we want to jump if below to end, so where is uh, jump if below is going to be this one, so it's one zero at the end. 
Uh, so that's going to be 2. And then 1, 0 is going to be 2. Yes, jump if below, and end is we don't know yet, so double question mark. All right, that was two bytes, so now we're at zero seven. Oh, fuck me. Fuck chili. Uh, okay, so move immediate value in X into A. So again, this is just going to be zero, zero, double question mark, and then uh, oh, 09, zero, 04, and... Now we want uh, OA, and uh, what is this bullshit? So this is going to be 1, 1, so it should be 0, 3, double question mark, and 2 bytes is A, B, C, and uh, we want to move B into B. What is that going to be? Shit, now I got to think here. Uh, we want to do that. And if that is that, that's going to be 111, one, which is 7. So 0, fuck, stop it. Control Z. Uh, 0, 7 will load the address pointed to by B, the memory at the address pointed to by B, into B. And as 1 byte, so now we're at D. And now we want to add A to B. Uh, so add, that's going to be 1. Urgh. This is going to be a recurring theme. I can tell this already, but don't worry because I got I got things planned. This will not be. This is not going to be some a regular feature. Let me say that. Uh, so that's going to be eight plus destination source. What is the destination? Destination is B. That's one. So that's going to be eight plus two is ten. Source is A, which is one. So that means that this should be one A. If I'm not mistaken. I hope so. Alright, hexadecimal making my brain hurt a little bit. But we will move on. One, so D. Next one is E. Uh, and again, we're moving bullshit into A. So we go quest, double question mark. E, F, and then 16. There we go. Move B into A. That's, that's different. Uh, move B into the memory pointed to by A. So this is going to be 0, 8, destination is A, so that's a 0, so this should be 0, 9. 0, 9, if I am correct, let's double check that. Uh, memory pointed to by A, so that's a 0, that's a 1, uh, wait, yeah, here we go, 0, 1, K. Okay. One. Yeah, that should be a 9. Alright, now jump if not carry loop. Jump if not carry is jump if below. Jump if below is yeah, 1, 0. 1, 0. So jump if below, that's just the same one here, right? So that's 2, 2. 2, 2. And loop is address 0. We already know this because we've already encountered the loop label. So we can just put that in directly. And now... All right, so again, we got zero, zero, question mark, question mark. And here we've got move A into A. That's this one here. So that should be zero. Well, we got zero, five, and then zero, four. And then we want to add one to A. So that is going to be one, six. And adding is one, and we're adding immediate value to A, so that means 1, 8, right? Because here we got 8, and then 0, 0, yes. And then the immediate value we're going to add is 0, 1. And 18, hexadecimal, move something into B. We've already got that, right? That's just 0, 3, question mark, question mark. Uh, 0, 3, question mark, question mark. And then we want to move A into the thing pointed to by B. We don't have that yet, so let's figure it out. Uh, first off, we got 1A. And so moving into a register is this. And we want to move into B, so that should be a 1. That's this. So that should be a 1, 0. So this should be 0A. 
No, did it again. Undo. So zero A, and don't believe we had that opcode before. That's good because we haven't done that thing before. And that should be just zero A. So now we have one B. Jump to loop. That's uh, just a standard jump. So that's going to be two, three, two, three, and loop is zero zero. And then end is going to be one B C D one D. And this one's going to be jump to end, so 2, 3, 1, D. And there we go, we've got our whole program assembled. Stop it. Now, here is F, H, so this is going to be F0, F1, F2, F3. I could have actually, because this org was here, I could have done this first and then assembled this, but whatever. Let me just make these capital for my OCD. And now what I want to do is, now that we know the addresses of all these symbols, uh, we've got to jam them in here. So first off, jump to the end is 1D, so we can put our D right in here. And now we've got all these things, so the address of in Y, the address of in X, exact. All this stuff has to be put in here. So in Y is F1. So we've got to jam an F1 into here. And I'll just do all the rest of them off screen because it's not super exciting, is it? In X is... All right, I've just realized something incredibly rage-inducing. But at least I realized it before debugging. And that was... So here we are... We're de decrementing basically the counter. And we jump uh, if below to end... But we don't store the counter back in to memory. So we lose that and we're never going to decrement lower than what we start with. Because we're just going to reload that same value. Uh, so we need to be able to store that counter. So that means that we need to move this shit down a bit. Let's just move this shit down quite a bit. And uh, what do we got to do in here is uh, we've got to move shit. No, we don't want to do that. We want to move into B from the address of in Y. And then we got to move into the memory pointed to a B from A. So this has got to store the counter back into memory after decrementing. And then we can proceed to add the accumulation part of the uh, the algorithm there. So let's cut this out. Let's put this back in. Now this has the incredibly annoying uh, side effect of invalidating all of these addresses. Because now we've just jammed two guys in here. So now I've got to redo all these fucking addresses. And now you can see the incredible fun of assembling machine code by hand. In that it is not fun at all fucking makes me want to drink bleach. Alright, so here's the code with that bullshit spliced in where we load the address of in Y into B and then we store A into B. Uh, now let me just fill in the addresses of these uh, variables into here. Alright, so here is what that bullshit all looks like uh, jumbled up together. And uh, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm pretty sure there's probably going to be a bug in here, at least one or two. But, I mean, there's a first time for everything, right? So, all right, now the way that this uh, Logisim bullshit works is I can, uh, I can save an image of this memory. And let me just call it, let me just call it mole zero. We'll just call this one test image dot text. We'll save that. And if I go into that folder, if I go into the 8-bit CPU and we go test image, here's what you get. So you get these bytes in memory. Now, uh, what I can do, good. I want to get these values, copy that, and I want them into a format like this. So what if I just, no, stop it. 
what if I just pasted this? Yeah, that's what you get. Now, I'm not sure, but I think maybe this will just load like this. Like, I don't have to put it all in one line or anything. It'll be, it'll be cool with the, uh, the line breaks. Let's check, let's test out that theory. So we'll save this, we'll do test image, and then we'll, uh, we'll load image, and we'll go test image.text. And as you can see, it has indeed loaded our motherfucking program into memory. And now, all we gotta do is go edit contents. And let's go to F0 and F1. And let's put some numbers in here. So let's go three times, no. Three times four. We'll close that window. And now we're gonna reset the CPU. No, that's the wrong tool. Reset the CPU. And let's just run this fucker and see uh, we'll see where she takes us. So, first thing we're going to expect is if I can do control T for toggle, right? First thing we're going to expect is we're going to load F1 into A and then we're going to load the value uh, at that place in memory into A. So the value is 4 because it's 3 times 4, right? Uh, then we're going to subtract 1 from that. That's 3. We're going to branch if the previous value was 0, which it is not. And uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to load the memory value into B, and we're going to store A back to whence it came. To whence it came from. Uh, so if we edit contents, now we see that this counter has gone down to 3, which is what we like. Uh, and then we're gonna load into A. Hmm. Yeah, that looks right. We're gonna load into A the, uh, the address F0, and then we're gonna load from that address into A, which is gonna put a 3, right? That's the incrementing value. And then we're gonna... And then we're gonna do what? Uh, we're gonna load into B, F2, and then we're gonna store... What is this? Um, I'm, what is 071A? I'm, I'm losing... I'm losing the... I'm losing my grip on the... 07... What is this bullshit? F2? 07, okay. Move B into here. Did I skip a step? Move that into there, and then we add them together. Okay. So yeah, we're loading the output value right now uh, into here, and that should be a zero, right? Yeah. So we load a zero because we haven't done any accumulating yet. And then we add... Wait... Yeah, that's good. Good. And then we load into A, and then we store this back to whence this came. And then we jump to zero, zero. Yeah. What is... What... Are this, is that okay? What's that, what's that 22? What's that 22? 22, jump if not, carry, loop. Yeah, because we didn't do a carry, so we just jump back to loop. We skip this part here. And uh, what happens if we keep going? Let's just go for a while. And uh, see where we do. Let's see where life takes us. It should end us up stuck in an infinite loop. But, nope, we just keep running past the end here, so there's definitely some fuck-ups. Uh, let's, let's check out the memory, see if we get the proper result. Edit contents. So the result is 0c, and we did 3 times 4, which is 12. So we get the correct result, but our infinite loop isn't infinite looping, is it? Uh, why could that be? Why would that be the, the case? Uh, well, jump and loop, jump if end, jump if below end, 
21 E F E F and this is 20 so this address should be 20 correct because it's E this is 1 E this is 1 F this should be 2 0 so I fucked up my calculation of the addresses a little bit that's gonna happen uh, all we gotta do is I think there's only two places where the end is being called, yeah. So I don't have to fucking control F that bullshit. So, we go into here, we paste our program back into here, we save that. We go into here, we load the image, and uh, where is it? Uh, test image, there we go. Open that. Alright, so, let's just... Uh, Edit contents. Okay, yeah, so these have been zeroed out. Let's put some numbers in here. So again, we'll do 3 times 4, which should be 12, which should be... What should that be? A is 0, B is 11, C is 12. So that's good. Uh, so we do that. Now let's just let her run. So to let it run, we do control K, right? And how many ticks we're going to be doing here? One hertz. That's a little slow, ain't it? Let's go to eight ticks per second. And we do control K. First, we got to reset this fucker. We do control K and she should just go. Control K, go, bitch. All right, now we're running. Um, won't really be able to tell until it finishes here, but... Uh, there we go. And if we inspect the memory, show edit contents, we have 0C. So now we're getting the correct result and we're, we're stopping at the proper infinite loop here. All right, so control K, finish that out, we'll reset this. Now let's go for a little higher value. And what we want to do here so this is going to be the one that we add multiple times. So let's go for a value like uh, 1, 7 hexadecimal. And we're going to multiply this one, uh, let's say, three times. And this one should, this one will not generate a carry. So we need a bigger number. Let's go for uh, E. E6, and we're going to multiply that. We're going to add it three times. So we'll do that, reset the memory, and we'll do Control K. Now E6 times three. Let's just look that up. Uh, hex to decimal. No. Mm. Hex E6 to decimal. Uh, so that's 230. Now we can do 230 times 3. 690. 69. Now we do 690 to hex. So we should get um, B2 and then 0, 2. Let's look at the memory. Edit contents. B E zero two B E zero two though seems a little uh, seems a little wrong. It's it's very close. It's very close, but it's not it's not what we uh, it's not what we asked for, is it? Let me uh, bounce B two. Okay, let's let's try this again. Uh, E6 hex to decimal. Now it's, it's apparently 230. Uh, shit. 230. Alright, I think I know what the problem was there. And the problem could have been that the uh, the old result was still sitting in here. Remember, our program doesn't clear out these uh, memory locations. 
So I believe that the problem was just that value zero C was sitting in there because if you add zero C to two, you get zero E, which was that that uh, last nibble that we saw there. So if I do this again with these cleared out, it should give us um, whatever that result was. I forget now. B, I think it was B two zero two. Let's try it. So let's 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 crank up the juice a little bit. We'll turn the tick frequency up to 128 hertz, and we'll go Control K, and there we go. We're done. Now let's uh, edit contents, and now we get B202. So our program is motherfucking working here, and uh, I don't know about you, but I think that is pretty goddamn sweet. I am mildly I'm mildly stoked about this. And I guess uh, what I probably should have done is I should have put a few instructions in here to zero out those values in memory before I started, but it's not a big deal. And there's a lot of room for optimization in a number of senses, in the sense of I could optimize this code to run faster with the current instruction set, or I could add instructions that would allow us to make this run faster with shorter code. And I'm going to be doing that kind of thing. From now on, what we're going to be doing for this CPU... Let me just stop this fucking CPU from running. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding instructions that will make operations better and that will make more things possible. This CPU, I mean, I believe just with these constructions alone, instructions alone, it is Turing complete. It could execute any program. The only problem is the amount of memory that uh, we have available, which is only 256 bytes. And as you can see, a single multiplication takes up like one eighth of our memory, pretty much. So that means that we're going to, you know, we're going to need more instructions so that we can write our programs, um, our operations with fewer instructions, save memory, so we can fit it all in 256 bytes. So that's what we're going to be doing in the future. But I think in the next video, because as you can see, fucking, I mean, c just writing out the assembly in hand is not a fun time. I mean, it's, I like it, but it's not the easiest thing. And uh, then having to go into count the addresses and to assemble the machine code by hand and look it up from a table is a fucking nightmare. So I think in the next video, what I want to do is I want to create a program. I'll just write it in C++ that will assemble this code. It will read in this code and it will output this code. And, uh, yeah, so I want to write, I want to write an assembler for the chili pork unit in C++. Until then, uh, if you enjoyed the video, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you again with some more chili pork unit.